Okay, this is part two of our study of the lower limb muscles. In the first part, I walked you through names and origins and insertions. And here I want to give you a few more tips on learning the origins and insertions. So you'll remember that number one, when you study this list, this list is just a list. You really want to focus on images, on pictures. And remember that the beginning of this is to learn the names of each and every muscle. You want to identify each and every muscle on the lower limb and be able to name each one. You have no business learning anything else on this list until you've done that. The second step is to learn the origins and insertions, and I took you through quite a bit of that on uh, part one of these lower limb muscles. Uh, next week, we will tackle these other facts over here and add those, but know that it's always simpler to start with the names, add the origins and insertions, and then add the other details to that as you go. So all of this fits together, but you need to do it in the proper order. So you remember that in part one, um, I showed you that visually we took the iliacus and psoas major muscles and said, okay, how do, how do we focus on these? And we showed how to visualize them. And in visualizing the muscles on the skeleton, you could also visualize the origins and the insertions. And if you know the skeleton, then this becomes very straightforward. Um, so we also, I also took some time and took you through a, a funny little way to remember the muscles in the posteriors, thigh, the gluteal muscles. And there's, of course, a family there which helps. And so these are tips that will help as you go along. In the next part here, let me walk you through some of the other, the muscles in the thigh and the muscles in the leg. Here in the muscles in the thigh, um, we're looking for groups of muscles that have an origin or an insertion in common. And one of the first that I see here is in the anterior compartment of the thigh. There are four muscles here that all have the same insertion. They, they all attach onto the tibial tuberosity through the patella. And you can see that in a picture like this. Uh, we call these four muscles often the quadriceps because they have a single insertion. They function together, so they get a group name, the quadriceps. But you can see their connective tissues coming together on the patella and then the connective tissue from the patella onto that tibial tuberosity. How much easier to learn these as a group rather than trying to memorize them one by one. Another place that you can see that here is in the medial compartment of the thigh. A couple of places here in the medial compartment that are helpful. Um, in the insertion category again, three of the five muscles all have the same insertion onto the linea aspera, onto the back of the femur. And I think in this picture you can see that uh, the muscles here in the picture are not attached to the anterior side of the femur. They're attached into the posterior side. Uh, another one that you can see here in this compartment um, are the origins. Three of the four muscles have the same origin here. So I wouldn't memorize, if I got into the thigh area, I wouldn't memorize muscles one by one. I would be looking for the groups first and memorizing those and then adding the other details as you might. In the foot um, or in the leg compartment here, this is muscles of the leg, we have to re remember that muscles of the leg um, in fact, everyone except for one, the majority of the muscles in the leg are attached into the foot. 
And if you look at the muscles and you look at how they attach into the foot, there's three basic groups of muscles here. There are muscles that are attached to the toes. And those are two in the anterior compartment, two in the posterior compartment. They come from the leg, but run right down through the foot and attach into the toes. There are also muscles here that attach into the foot. So four muscles that are attached to the toes. The other muscles here in this upper section, six muscles here, are then attached into the body of the foot. And then finally, attached to the heel, there are three muscles here at the bottom. So we have specific, and notice they don't fall in the compartments. We have a series of muscles that are attached into the toe, but they're both front and back. We have muscles attached into the foot, and they're front, back, and side. And then the muscles attached into the heel, of course, are all in the back. So let's look at these little by little. So if we take the toes first, these four muscles, two in the anterior compartment and two in the posterior compartment, notice that in each compartment there is a digitorum named muscle and a hallucis named muscle. Let's look at that word hallucis for a moment because that's going to tell us something very important. A hallucis muscle is attached to the great toe, which is known as the hallux. Hallux is the Latin term for great toe. So the adjective hallucis refers to the fact that something belongs to the great toe. So both an extensor hallucis muscle and a, a flexor hallucis muscle are present. So that's how you begin to look at these. The other one is the digitorum muscle, and of course you know that digital refers to toes, so a digitorum muscle then attaches to the other four toes. Special name for the great toe, and then a name for all the other toes, and they tend to be um, worked collectively with the muscles from the leg. There are muscles in the foot that can work them individually, but we tend to use them as a whole with these muscles from the leg. So the four toe muscles here are pretty straightforward when you see that, and their insertions um, become reliable if you know what the name means. The origins are going to be a little more of a challenge, but we can get to that in a bit. Let's look then at the foot. Those bones that fit into the foot, the ones right in here, these are um, muscles that are going to raise the foot and lower the foot, um, tip the foot inward, tip the foot outward. Uh, these are muscles that are making the subtle adjustments to the foot. These are not the big power muscles. These are the muscles that are making adjustments to the foot so that it can fit and contour itself to whatever surface it's standing on. If we look at the muscles right here in this area, hopefully you know the five muscles, I'm sorry, the five bones right in the center there, and then the five metatarsals as well. Um, the four muscles that I've highlighted here are the ones that do the majority of the tipping of the foot side to side. Um, two of the muscles, the tibialis anterior, and in the second group, the peroneus longus, you can see they both attach to the same place. So here are two muscles that attach to the same place onto the medial side of the foot and um, the tibialis anterior attaches from the top, from the dorsal aspect, and the peroneus longus from the inferior, or the, the plantar aspect. And then if you look at the other two, the peroneus tertius and the peroneus brevis, they each attach over onto the fifth metatarsal here on the lateral side. So four muscles in two groups 
that are attaching to the margins of the foot. And when these work, they tip the foot right or left um, and up or down. The muscles on the top that pull would raise the foot. The two muscles that are underneath would pull, pull the foot down. So there is one other muscle here that fits in with the foot. This is called the tibialis posterior. It's an inferior, it's a posterior muscle. You can see it's in the posterior group. The tendons come down under the foot and grab all the other remaining bones here. So although it's got an enormous, very large insertion, if you think about what that insertion is, it's actually all of the other bones here, except for the three that we had detailed in our previous look. So there, there are the muscles that attach into the main body of the foot. And then finally, the posterior part of the leg, the big power muscles are here. Um, we sometimes call these the calf muscles. And notice that all three muscles here have the same insertion. They insert onto the calcaneus, onto the heel. And these are the ones that drive you forward when you run or when you walk. They lift the heel, which in turn presses down the toes and drives you forward. So here's another group of three with a common insertion. So my counsel to you is don't just uh, randomly start at the top of a list and work your way down. Look for these commonalities. Look for the places where all of these muscles have a common origin or insertion. And as you've seen, 90% of the time the insertions are the easier ones to do. If it was me, I would learn all the insertions I could first. And then I'd go back and start seeing how I could fit in origins as I go. But always start with what's the easiest and work your way up to the hardest. Don't just brainlessly just go down through a list. There's one other thing that we want to concentrate on here, and that is the connective tissues that are uh, involved in this. We already had mentioned one, the iliotibial tract. So here on the back of this muscle handout, we have listed five pieces of dense fibrous connective tissue that are significant. They have names and they're significant in their relationship between the bones and the muscles. Um, the first one, as I mentioned before, is one that um, I showed you in the, um, in the first muscle lecture. It's called the iliotibial tract, and it connects from the muscles that are attached to the ilium and the sacrum all the way down past the knee onto the tibia. This connective tissue then functions as part of the insertion for the tensor fasciolata muscle and the gluteus maximus muscle. Gluteus maximus has plenty of other things to do, but some of its fibers anchor and support um, the knee and the hip from this connective tissue. Um, other ones include the tissue here between the tibia and the fibula. Right there. Connective tissue <clears throat> that's related to the muscles we just talked about a few moments ago. The calf muscles where they connect to the calcaneus, called the calcaneal tendon. Um, there are three muscles in the thigh that all connect together into one site called the pes anserinus. And you can see it right here just below the knee on the medial side. And there's a muscle anterior, medial, and posterior for that. So if we look at these... Here is the two muscles that insert through the iliotibial tract onto the tibia. Here are the three muscles 
that use the pessant serranus to attach onto the tibia. And you can see there's one in the anterior compartment. And that happens to be the only one that doesn't have that um, tibial tuberosity insertion. And then there's one in the medial compartment and one in the posterior compartment. So one of each. You might be able to put those together. The connective tissue between the tibia and the fibula is called an interosseous membrane. It's part of the joint between those two bones. The tibia and the fibula are anchored together into a fibrous joint. We call it a syndesmosis. Deal with that in our joint lecture. But that connective tissue then also provides an anchoring site for some of the muscles in the leg. And you can see them here. In terms of compartments, it's not too bad. All of the anterior compartment muscles include the interosseous membrane. None of the lateral compartment muscles do. And then half of the posterior deep compartment muscles include that. And it has to be one of these deep muscles. The, the calf muscles are very superficial and, of course, don't include that. So IO here that you see in the origin list, IO membrane, is not 10, but interosseous membrane, literally the membrane between the two bones. The calcaneal tendon, pretty obvious here, the three calf muscles all attached to the calcaneus through that tendon. So <clears throat> those are the connective tissues. Those are some tips on how to learn these origins and insertions, both front and back. And uh, I hope you're able to divide this up time-wise. Just take a small group at a time. Work your way through. Number one, make sure you know all the names. Then attach the origins and insertions to them. I think I'd say lastly, make sure you do learn these muscles in their small groups. These groups are going to be very, very useful next week when we talk about nerves and actions. If I can say to you, what are the three muscles in the posterior side of the leg, the superficial posterior side, and you can just, you know what three those are. What are the two muscles in the lateral leg? What are the five muscles in the anterior thigh? If you can do that, you will set yourself up to do very well next week with the information we'll be dealing with then. Okay, so hope this was good for you, and uh, good luck with that.